Hello and welcome back to another video. This is part two of the what's in my camera bag videos that I'm doing as I thought this could do with its own specific video. Today I'm going through my motorsport kit, what I used to edit, the bag, what's in it and maybe a bit about how I work. I'm not too sure about that yet but the bag I use is the same as I use for uni and everything. It's KNF Concept, this rucksack which is so handy, I love it, it's very convenient even though you do have to flip it over to like open it because it opens from the back. So if you've if you've not watched the first video yet, um, go and check that out because a lot of the kit that's in this rucksack I won't be talking about in this, but it is talked about in the first one. So for motorsport, I used to use this, which is my 70 to 300 mil Sigma, and I do keep this around just because it's very handy, it's quite light, so if I want to just run around, I can just use this. I do keep a CPO filter on it, as that is just incredibly handy for preventing sky blowout and a lot of other stuff. This comes with me if we're going on the back of a motorbike to around, as it's so light and it's so easy just to stick it back. Aside from that, I also take the blower, which I mentioned in the previous video, as this is just, with the dust, it's just really handy to have this to blow the dust away and keep the kit like working as well as it can. The other lens I take with me in this camera bag is this, which is my Canon 24-70 to and I keep this with me because it works on the gimbal so if I want to do some gimbal work of video stuff for the guys I can just stick this on and it works with the gimbal. It's also a wide lens so it is quite handy for portraits and behind the scenes shots in the paddock. At the minute I have a UV filter from Earth on this just because I've been using it for some autumnal stuff and a CPL in low light in the winter in the UK. It's not particularly fun as you have to shoot on a ridiculously low shutter speed and without a tripod it's not particularly easy. I do take the microphone that I'm using to film this with me as well but I've not been using it as much because the audio on my camera I deemed like decent enough for the time being. I was also using a gimbal and it didn't particularly work out with the gimbal. So camera body I use is the Canon 5D Mark III and I adore this thing, it's amazing and even when I was using my Sigma lens which didn't really check out on the camera I'm filming on the quality wasn't all that. As soon as I stuck this, the, that le the Sigma lens onto this, the quality was just so much better. And this was my this is my first pro pro line camera, I guess. And it just does everything I need it to. It's not got as quick a shutter speed as some of the like specific sports cameras do, but it's good enough for me, and I adore it. It was also second hand on eBay which is handy because eBay do very good quality secondhand camera kit so a lot of my kit is secondhand from eBay. I also bring my batteries with me. I've got three of these which are always charged at the start of a weekend and they if I can be bothered I use I think I go through one a day pretty much with these. These do however last a bit longer than the other ones I used prior to this for the camera I'm filming on but they're great I've only got three and in the other little section lives the battery for the microphone I do also take with me a screwdriver flathead one just to tighten the mounts on my gimbal and my tripod monopod to the camera because 
I find they tend to come a bit loose, especially with my big ones on, it's a bit tricky. So that always lives in there, otherwise I end up having to borrow one and it's the right there. I do also take with me a monopod, which is currently attached to the tripod I'm filming on, as the KNF Concept tripod I got. Um, it's got a detachable monopod, which you basically take the centre column out um, and screw it onto one of the legs, which has detachable monopod written on it, which is very handy. But that's how that works. Um, so my main lens that I use for motorsport, as of the back end of the 2020 season, we went. So we went to the photography show with uni in induction, and I've been wanting to buy myself a proper motorsport lens for a while, but I can never justify it because we're always going on the motorbike, and it's just completely impractical. In, completely impractical. But. This year, I've decided I've been going to a lot of them just in the car, so I can just divide. So I thought, why not? So I treated myself at the photography show to this bad boy, which is Sigma, because I I've had my heart set on this lens for a good while. It was like if I ever get a proper motorbike lens, this is the lens I'm gonna get. So I treated myself to. Sigma 150 to 600 and it looks like this. It's pretty damn big. This hood just screws off to screw back on again so it looks like that. This part sits on the monopod and altogether it's quite weighty. But for this there were two options on this particular lens. There was the sport version or the contemporary version. And I got the contemporary version, which you can't really see that, but the C on there means contemporary. And this was a hell of a lot lighter than the specific sports version. And it's just got all the controls. It can do everything the sports one can. The sports one just does it all just that little bit better, but it wasn't enough to just divide the price. But this is what I use for most of my motorsport stuff now, and it's unbelievable. I love it. I've took a while to get used to it, to get hang of it, but I'm in love with it, and I would not use my old lens or another lens to shoot motorsport ever again after shooting this. So in terms of actual camera kit, that is all that I take with me on a motorsport weekend. I leave it in the truck so I don't have to carry it around so I can just take my monopod and my camera and my lens like around the track so I'm not lugging everything with me. But now I'm just going to show you what I used to edit how, and talk through maybe a bit about how I edit. But the key thing recently, well this year, similarly with my other lens, I invested, I invested in a MacBook Pro because I, I've got a desktop Mac but operating on an all iOS system it's so much easier and it's one of those things I've just had my heart set on for a while so I treated myself to MacBook Pro 2020 and I got it in space grey just put a case on it to keep it protected I've got a sleeve for it as well but I use this so so much and I'm in love with it and I'm so thrilled I bought it but because it's a 2020 it's got extremely limited ports, so I use this little thing which is Anchor and it just plugs into the USB-C stuff and has all of the essential ports I need such as a card reader, US, proper USB ports and this is essential. It doesn't quite work with the case on so I have to take the bottom part off but I do all this and it works perfectly with the laptop. I also didn't have a mouse for the laptop when I got it originally because I thought I probably wouldn't need it, but I, I ended up investing in a Bluetooth mouse. This one is from Logitech because Premiere Pro editing, photo editing if you've not got a preset, it's always handy to have this so you can do more technical stuff. Don't use this as often as I should, but it's handy to have it when I need it. And then my 4TB hard drive, which everything 
is on these things. I don't operate straight off of a computer anymore. It's just so much easier to operate solely off of a hard drive. And it's got all my motorsport stuff on it. I edit straight from this and I edit straight onto this. I keep a USB-C adapter attached to it so that once I've transferred everything over, I can just work straight from this and not need my adapter. In order to edit, I use the Adobe Suite and due to being on an arts course at uni, I have access to, through my uni degree and my uni email, I have access to Premiere Pro, every Adobe software I could ever want. And I use, prior to uni, I was paying for my Photoshop subscription, which I've now cancelled whilst I'm at uni, so I can make most of this. And I was using my uni license anyway, because I've been learning and teaching myself Premiere Pro as a lot of companies and teams use Premiere Pro to edit video. So I use Premiere Pro, <laughs> as if I've not said it enough already, to edit the videos I shoot during a weekend and to edit these videos and just edit any kind of video content. I'm trying to make the most of it and learn as much as I can to do with it whilst I have the option. Um, I don't use Photoshop too much. I tend to just ping all my images into Lightroom where I've got a preset set in and I just attach the preset to all the images and go through the images, find out which ones are fully focused, which ones I like, which ones I'm going to crop, which ones I'm going to edit and then I export them all with my watermark on and they're ready for Instagram and that's a brief run through of how I edit really. It's all preset based and quick cut together raw videos which the team like and that's basically how I edit and what's in my camera bag. So thank you for watching this video and watching part two of the What's in My Camera Bag series. I've done a mini thing of and I hope you found it informative and enjoyed seeing the gear that I use, what I've invested in, why I've decided to invest in things, what I use to edit and if you want any like editing tutorials or anything just pop it in the comments and I'll get on that because it's one of those things where I'm not sure if people want to see or if it would be useful because I'm not a pro in that department it's just kind of what I think I need what I like do preset based is pretty much all but yeah hope you enjoyed the video feel free to comment any ideas give it a like <laughs> if you liked it and that's the end of the what's in my camera bag series so I'll see you next time. Suddenly I'm dead.